Hey everybody, this is Steve, and is faith alone enough to save us? Last week we talked about a big question Orthodox Christians often get, how to read the Bible. And this week we're covering another basic one, the role of faith in our salvation. Some Christians will look at the basic practices of an Orthodox Christian, things like fasting and attending the divine services, and dismiss them as irrelevant. They'll say that we can't earn our salvation through works, that the only thing that really counts is our faith in God. They might point to passages in Scripture, like Romans 1.17, the just shall live by faith. Ephesians 2.8, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And Philippians 3.9, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. They might argue that the Orthodox Church is totally wrong and misdirected, wasting time on works when all that counts is our faith in God. So, is that true? Well, let's look at this question with the eyes of a bee and find out. For help, I'm very happy to welcome my friend, Father Barnabas Powell. You may know Father Barnabas from his Ancient Faith Ministries podcast and blog, and from his new Intro to Orthodoxy course, Journey to Fullness. Thanks for joining me, Father Barnabas. Steve, it's great to be with you and everyone who's watching. I, I should first point out that I used to believe in, that salvation was by faith alone. Uh, I was raised as a Pentecostal and then became an Evangelical Protestant. It was only later that I discovered the truth of the Orthodox Church. And I guess we should start by admitting that one part of the argument is at least partially right. Because it's true, salvation is not something that we earn by works. It's a gift freely offered by Jesus Christ. As Stephen Christian discussed a few weeks back, the ascetic struggle of the church isn't about somehow earning God's favor. As much as it about directing our desires, taming our passions, so that we become the sort of people who delight in God's righteousness instead of remaining a slave to our destructive sins. Yet even so, the Orthodox Church doesn't confess that faith alone is enough for salvation, that merely believing in Jesus is enough to magically poof save us. Because salvation is about much more than intellectually believing the right things, it's about being united with God himself. Earlier, we quoted Philippians 3.9, which seems to say that we get our righteousness through faith in Christ. Yet, if we look at the original Greek, we'll see that a better reading of the verse means that we get our righteousness through the faith of Christ. So how do we make the faith of Christ our own? By not simply believing in Christ, but by uniting ourselves to Christ. And this makes sense when we remember, as Father Barnabas reminded us, that salvation is about life. It's about Christ's victory over sin and death, as we celebrate every Pascha when we sing that Christ is risen from the dead. And there's a simple image which Christ himself offered that can help clarify things for us. In the Gospel according to John in chapter 15, Jesus offers us a perfect illustration of what salvation looks like. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. As Steve has explained before, the branch doesn't have life in itself. It receives its life from the vine. And if you were to pluck a branch off a vine, it would die. And that image of a branch broken off the vine perfectly captures the situation we fallen humans find ourselves in and our desperate need for the life which only Jesus Christ can offer. Of course, the branch can't recover simply by believing in the vine. It needs to be reattached to the vine. It needs to be grafted into the vine so that the life of the vine flows through it. Life doesn't simply consist of confessing the vine. It consists of being in authentic union with the vine. Just as in a marriage, however, union requires consent. A marriage based upon force or coercion would simply fall short of what a marriage should be. In the same way, God does not force us to love him or cooperate with his grace. He constantly offers himself freely to us, and we choose with every breath to reject him or unite ourselves more intimately to him. Union requires our effort, not in the sense of earning God's love or earning a reward from him for our good behavior, but in the sense that we must offer ourselves to him freely, allowing him to dwell within us, just like Mary consented to become the mother of God freely 
and was not forced by the angel. This is the effort we put forth to form within ourselves a dwelling place for Christ that allows us to be united to Him. And union, authentic union, requires more than simple intellectual assent that Jesus is the Savior. Think of it much more like marriage, an ongoing revelation of ourselves to God and God, the only lover of mankind, to us. This is why Jesus Christ Himself didn't just simply say in Matthew chapter 28, to go and make disciples of all nations. No, he tells us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In other words, teaching and doing. Because as St. Paul tells us in Galatians 3.27, all those who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, have been united to Christ, so that as we read in Galatians 2.20, it is no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. And this is why in the Acts of the Apostles, we read again and again that new Christians are welcomed into the church, not simply by believing in Christ, but by being united to him in baptism, by receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit in chrismation, by receiving Christ's very body and blood in Holy Communion. These beautiful mysteries are eventually what led me to leave Protestantism and enter the fullness of the church because I was no longer content to simply confess Jesus. I wanted to belong to Him, to truly be part of Him and His body, the church. I realized that I needed to die in the waters of baptism so that I could rise with Christ in newness of life, that I, a dead branch and dry branch that I am, needed to be joined to the vine. I realized that I needed to receive the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit to experience the grace of Pentecost in the mystery of chrismation. I realized that I needed to taste and see that the Lord is good, to take and eat of His body in the mystery of Holy Communion so that I could more perfectly become a member of His body. This is the gospel that Steve and I preach, the gospel that has continuously been preached by the Orthodox Church and the Orthodox Christians since the very beginning, the same gospel preached and lived by the apostles and all of the disciples. The gospel which proclaims the good news that Jesus Christ has defeated death by His death and that His kingdom is truly at hand. So let's be the bee and unite ourselves to Christ. Be the bee and live orthodoxy. Remember to like and subscribe and share. I'll see you all next week. Thanks to our supporters on Patreon who helped make this episode possible. To support the creation of more Orthodox Christian content, please visit patreon.com slash y2am.